But first and foremost, number one, uh, I've got a couple of uh, just principles for dating. And of course, as we always talked about, and I said when I started this series, you know, that we need to renew our mind and get the right perspective. It's the same when we're going to date somebody. We need to have the right perspective. In 1 Corinthians 10, the Bible says, Wherefore, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. So we need to have that perspective that in anything we do, we do it for God's glory. We do it for the for the glory of God, we do it to serve God, even though we're serving another person. You know, it's like when we serve in church, we're not just serving in church to the end that we are serving church. You know, it's to the end that we're serving the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's why we serve in church. That's why we serve our spouse. That's why we submit to our husband, or that's why we protect and we love our wife. So it's the same when it comes to dating. When it comes to dating, you need to have that right perspective because uh, a lot of people will ask when they think about the topic of dating, you know, is this the right person for me? And you know, there's a right way and a wrong way to ask that question. The wrong way is, you know, what is this person going to do for me? How is this person going to fulfill my life, fulfill my desires? A, a self-serving way to ask that question. But the right way to ask that question is, you know, how is this person going to help me serve God? Is this person going to bring me closer to God? Is this relationship going to be a relationship that's pleasing to God and makes us serve God even more? Is this, is this a person that I'm going to raise children with to serve the Lord? Or do they not have an interest in the Lord at all? Uh, and that plays a big part, obviously, in having a successful marriage. Yeah, you can have a happy marriage. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to have a happy marriage as long as you both you know, have the same interests. But it's not so easy to have a marriage that serves God and puts God first because that means both of you have to be committed to serving God and not serving yourself. So are you looking for someone to serve you uh, and fulfill your desires or someone that will serve God with you? Um, so there's a right way and a wrong way to ask that question. Um, just go to a couple of verses quickly here. Matthew 4.10 Then saith Jesus unto him, this is Jesus being tempted in the garden by Satan, he says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So again, you say, well, we serve other people too, but we serve other people because we're serving God. You know, so God, at the end of the day, is the only one we are meant to serve. So who, when, you, when you ask that question, you've got to think, you know, who will best serve God? Who will best serve God with you? Who will best cause you to serve God? Who wants to have children and raise them for God? Uh, when you're looking at dating. And of course, you know, for us, us, us who are married, you know, we're not, we're not dating anymore. This is still what you want to strive for, you know, in your marriage. It's the same, it's the same goal. Um, so put God first. Uh, let's look at Philippians 4 here. Philippians 4, verse 4. I won't read it all. I wanted to read a couple of verses here, but the key verse I just wanted to show you here, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. And you might be thinking, well, what, verse, what, is, what does this verse have to do with having the right perspective? Well, the last thing I just wanted to say in having the right perspective is, you know, don't turn dating and marriage into an idol. Because a lot of young people will, right? They, they turn marriage and dating into an idol where if it doesn't work out with this person, it, then you know, they're just distraught, their joy is gone, they get out of church. Um, or you know, it, the, the person that they're dating or they're married to, that's all they think about. And they're infatuated with them. And, you know, and they'll, and they'll you know, go out of their way to serve that person. And then you have to ask the question is, have you created an idol? You know, if, if something doesn't work out in your life to the point where you lose your joy, you get out of church, you're not serving God anymore, you've got to think, did I put that person in the place of God? Because shouldn't God be the one that you're thinking about day and night and meditating on, not this person? You know, will you go out of your way as much for that person? Or will you, will you go out of your way to serve God as, you might, as much as you will for that person? You know, you're dating, dating a girl, for us, us guys probably know this, you know, you're dating a girl, she calls you, she needs something done, you go and do it. No questions asked, right? You need to take it, pick her up from work and take her home, no questions asked. <laughs> will you do the same for God? When God says to do something, will you just do it, no questions asked? Do you know what I mean? So we have to have this right perspective that we put God first. Don't create an idol. And I just thought of that verse because the Bible says to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, not rejoice in a man or a woman. So that's the first point. Have, have the right perspective uh, when you're dating. Uh, 